Hello, I'm Bella Tolbert, Brand Executive at DKI Witness. And I'm Alex Pathé, Editor at DKI Witness. Welcome to Where to Go, where every fortnight we find out more about the world's favourite travel destinations with the people who know those places best. And welcome back to Season 7. James and Lucy, your usual hosts, are on parental leave, but we're going to continue to bring you stories from the most exciting destinations around the world. Alex, where are we going today? Bella, it's very exciting. It's good to be back. Today, we are going to the deep south of the US. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, me too. It's such a rich and kind of culturally exciting region. So obviously, it's the southern United States, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina and Georgia. Yeah, It's just a beautiful region. Have you ever been to that region, Bella? I've never been. I have to say New Orleans really does top my bucket list. And also, I'd say like Atlanta, I really do want to visit. Just yeah, I'd love to drive around the whole region. It looks amazing amazing for sure me too absolutely what about you have you been i've never been no but when i was at university i was really into reading the southern gothics i was reading a lot of like william Mm. faulkner and flannery o'connor and tennessee williams and they just evoke the landscapes of the south so beautifully so i'm really excited for this episode and who have we got on to talk about it we have lynn brown Today's guest, Lynn Brown, is a writer, professor and digital storyteller whose work can be found in media outlets such as GQ, Ebony, Vice, Condé Nast, Traveller and for us here at DKI Witness on the forthcoming road trips in the USA. Welcome, Lynn. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for joining us, Lynn. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. (laughs) So as usual, we're going to begin with learning a little bit more about our guest, Lynn, followed by her all-important recommendations of where to go and insider knowledge of the Deep South. Then we'll hear about how to plan the best possible visit. So Lynn, you're New York born, but I've seen you write that your heart belongs to New Orleans. Tell us why. Yeah, I actually lived in New Orleans for like seven, eight years on and off, pre and post Katrina, actually. And I originally went to the University of New Orleans and I got off the plane that first time in New Orleans and I was just like, oh, I'm home, you know, and it's just been like that ever since, really. It's my favorite city in the world. What did you study when you were at the university? I started off studying anthropology, actually. But then I I always tell people I hung out with jazz musicians instead of going to class. So I had to transfer. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love that. That sounds amazing. I mean, it must feel, the city must feel so different to New York. It must have been quite a kind of culture shock when you first arrived there. Yeah, definitely. It's very different than New York. New York is very, you know, kind of type A personality. Everybody's very ambitious and, you know, go, go, go. And New Orleans is way like just chill. You know, everybody's chill and friendly and everyone's always got time to talk to you. You know, it's great. I mean, it sounds amazing. It would be remiss of us, I think, not to mention uh, Mardi Gras at this point, Lynn. But that's next week. Is that right? Are you kind of gearing up for that? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's Tuesday. <laughs> wow. Nice. Are you going this year? Yep. So this weekend in New Orleans, it's probably madness. Uh, No, I'm not going this year. I actually, I kind of avoid Mardi Gras. (laughs) Mardi Gras, New Orleans during Mardi Gras feels very different than New Orleans generally, you know. Although I do tell people that if you really want to go to Mardi Gras and you want to feel like like what it feels like to be a local during Mardi Gras, go uptown. Like on St. Charles in the Garden District rather than downtown in the French Quarter where everybody is. Right, okay. Is it slightly, it must be just absolutely chaotic in some of the central parts of the city during Mardi Gras. Oh, yeah, it's madness. Like the streets are closed down and like there's so many people and, you know, a lot of drunk people, <laughs> you uh, know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was saying that uptown, I was actually telling a friend this recently, uptown, like you're drunk, but like, you know, you're drinking, but you're like around your kids. So you don't want to be like trashed. Whereas during like tourists uh, on Canal Street are just like completely obliterated, you know, it's it's a very different vibe, you know? Yeah, God, I thought that this is already fantastic advice. That sounds like the place to be if you're (laughs) going to be there during Mardi Gras. Yeah, exactly. Uptown, around families. (laughs) (laughs) So if we broaden the focus here slightly, Lynn, so the Deep South in general, it's a collection of states, but other than proximity, what ties these states together? Yeah, I think the Deep South has, well, I guess both history and culture. The U.S. is enormous and we definitely have like very distinct cultures uh, as you go across the U.S. And the South, particularly the Deep South, sort of has its own 
culture, mm -hmm. food, you know, like I, I was saying earlier, everybody's very friendly, you know, you yeah. hear about Southern hospitality, but then also there's a, there's a strong kind of civil rights history there, mm -hmm. African American history, Native American history that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, it's a collective culture um, in the South that ties it together. Nice, thank you. I think we're going to dive into all that a bit later in the episode, but if you had to give someone just, you know, a really short elevator pitch to convince them to visit the Deep South, how would that go? Yeah, I think it gets a bad rap sometimes, but like, honestly, the South is beautiful. It's, the landscape is gorgeous. There's a lot of historical architecture. There's a lot of important history that people, you know, should know about and don't necessarily. And honestly, like the food is incredible. <laughs> you will definitely gain weight when you <laughs> hang out in the South for a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, it's like a very unique part of the US and it's got a very distinct kind of culture. Yeah, that I would say is, is definitely worth the visit. Amazing, well, I'm sold. I'm yeah, <laughs> absolutely already sold. I wanna come, it sounds amazing. Okay, so to really kick things off, we're going to ask you to give us a quick fire tour of the Deep South. Now, that is no mean feat given the size of the region we're talking about, yeah. but we're going to name a few categories and you have to suggest just one thing to do in each of the categories. Okay. Are you ready, Lynn? Yes. Perfect. Wonderful. So the first category is what is your favourite view? Oh, goodness. The Mississippi River. Probably from, uh, a lot of these are going to be New Orleans, probably from, you know, New Orleans, you can walk up to the river and sit oh. on the riverfront and and there's a beautiful view of the river there. That sounds lovely. Oh, it sounds amazing. There are a few rivers in the world that are quite as kind of storied and picturesque. I feel like I've seen it on screen. I've read so much about it, but I've yeah. never been. It just seems beautiful. I think the great thing about that view in particular is there's often someone playing music on the, you know, on the riverbank. So you kind of get this beautiful view and just like free music in the background. It's, it's very uh, picturesque. Oh, amazing. <laughs> that sounds gorgeous. Okay, so my one I'm going to ask you is possibly the hardest one. What about your favorite thing to eat? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you two answers. One is New Orleans. My my uh, my death my death row meal is crawfish etouffee, oh, wow. which I love. If you don't know what etouffee is, it's essentially like a gravy. Like you make a roux and... There's like vegetables and then crawfish tails and you serve it over rice and it's delicious. When it's done well, it's spicy. It's it's good. Nice. But I will say another thing that I think that people should try that they don't know about is actually Mississippi hot tamales, Ooh. which are they're like uh, it's a unique to Mississippi. They're not like tamales like Mexican tamales. They're. Mm. There's meat in them and it's corn masa, but they're like boiled and they're actually served more. It's like a African-American culture thing. There's mm -hmm. a whole thing about nobody knows like how that happened, but they're very good and they're very interesting. That, wow, sounds, that sounds up my street. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Tamales are so hard to get in the UK. We've just finished editing a book on Mexico, which is coming out later this year. And I've been oh, trying yeah. to cook a lot of Mexican cuisine, but I'd never heard about that form of tamales before. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's a really it's really unique and interesting. It's good. I suppose that's the other beautiful thing about the deep south is just this incredible synthesis of different cultures and the way that these kind of foods have been kind mm. of merged and, uh, and and formed these kind of new things that sounds great yeah absolutely i think that a lot of the food is like that mm -hmm. like new orleans food is also like you know french and indigenous and african mm -hmm. and it's kind of this blend so yeah there's a lot of that in the south Oh, that's amazing. I'm, I've made a note of the first dish you said. I'm going to look it up after this because that just sounds so great. Yeah. <laughs> so on a related note, Lynn, what about your favourite thing to drink? My favourite thing to drink? See, the classic Southern thing to drink is sweet tea. Mm -hmm. But like when they say sweet tea in the South, it's like very, very, very sweet. <laughs> like it's really yeah, like I generally, it's too sweet for me. That's how you know I'm not a real Southerner. <laughs> so I can't drink the sweet tea. Um, but my favorite thing, oh man, I don't know. I guess, oh, you know what? This is New Orleans again. I do know what it is. There is a, so New Orleans is famous for these alcoholic daiquiris. And there's one that they have at the uh, Jean Lafitte's blacksmith shop, which is a bar. It's like a historical building, but also a bar. And I think it's called something like Voodoo Brew. It's like purple. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. Delicious, but it's dangerous because it just tastes like a slushy, but there's definitely alcohol in it. 
<laughs> I think I would love that. A voodoo yeah. brew, that sounds amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take that recommendation for when I visit New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's funny because I always, when I take people to New Orleans, I'm always like, all right, we're not really going to do Bourbon Street. We're going to do Bourbon Street one time. And that's usually the one time we go to Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop. We get that one drink and then we, you can kind of, it's a great view of the, of the quarter because you can kind of see down Bourbon Street and the lights and stuff. So yeah, definitely do that. <laughs> great. Okay. So the next one, day activity. Day activities. So, oh, goodness. Yeah, I think the outdoors. So there's a lot of beautiful, like, landscape in the south and a lot of, like, hiking, which you wouldn't expect. Uh, a lot of water stuff, definitely, if you're, like, a water, you know, fisherman or something like that. So I would definitely say hiking is actually my favorite day activity in the south, which, yeah, I think that's a surprising one. But, yeah. Yeah, definitely one of the things I think of when I think of Deep South is this almost like this kind of evocative swampy landscape. Mm -hmm. It just seems so cool. I would love to, you know, take a boat and just sail around. Yeah, they they have those. Is the that's like a lot of Louisiana is like that. There's some places in Mississippi, Alabama. You know, one of the things that's really cool about Alabama, Alabama has beautiful beaches like white no sand beaches wow. like yeah and it's like something that people don't think about but it's like and it's like if you want like a beach vacation you can go to s the southern alabama to the gulf coast and and uh, oh my god who knew that's yeah. so cool that is amazing yeah. yeah you would not think about the state having that kind of landscape that's incredible yeah so the final one from the quick fire round i realize we've asked you so many follow-up questions it hasn't been as quick as we anticipated <laughs> but you've said such rich answers it's brilliant uh so your favorite museum or gallery oh wow i really oh. so it's funny because i'm like does this count as the deep south i love in memphis tennessee they mm -hmm. have the civil rights the national civil rights museum and i think that's right. like an important one that everybody should should go to yeah and that's that's i think one of my one of my major recommendations but i'm like does memphis count as the deep south i'm not sure but we'll, we'll call it that yeah uh, well, we'll let you have it we'll let you have it yeah. Memphis is... <laughs> yeah have you spent much time in memphis lynn you know i've been a couple times and i yeah. love memphis i love memphis more than nashville everybody's like oh nashville and nashville and i'm like no no memphis is cooler than nashville i think yeah. they've still got the music they've got the food they've got a lot of history i think memphis is is underrated you know? It seems great. I would love to visit Memphis. It seems fantastic. Perfect. Well, that is, thank you. That's the, that's the quick fire round done. That was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great job. We really held you up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how quick it was, but <laughs> I did my best. That's all on us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think actually talking about Memphis, it kind of leads us quite nicely onto my next question, which mm -hmm. is about obviously musical legacy is mm. a massive draw to the region. How can visitors best experience it? Just go out and see live music. Honestly, I think that one of the great things about a lot of places in the South, especially like Memphis and New Orleans, um, Mississippi as well, because the Mississippi Blues Trail, mm. you can just go see live music. And it's, you know, one of my favorite things about New Orleans is Frenchman Street. You can kind of just walk down Frenchman Street and decide what band you like because there's a bunch of different bands playing and you can hear them from the street. And like Mississippi has these really cool juke joints. They used to have more. Now I think they they were closed down because the, they used to be very rural. So now you have to find them in places like Clarksdale, Mississippi. But they're just like little hole in the wall spots where, you know, usually there's not like there's a bar, quote unquote, but it's like, you know, here's a cooler with some beer. That's all we've got kind of situation. But then wow. the local musicians are incredible. You know, they mm -hmm. just play and it's like a lot of local bands and great singers, you know. Yeah, so just go see live music. That's the best way to experience it. Uh, I mean, it's the great. spontaneity of that sounds incredible. So it's not so much a matter of kind of booking tickets to gigs or something. It's just a matter of it, walking through the city and you'll encounter it just as you go around. That sounds yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about New Orleans, actually, <laughs> is that. But um, Beale Street in Memphis also is like that, where you can just kind of walk and, and hear different music playing. And I think that's definitely like, part of the musical legacy that's very different from like New York, say, where, yeah, yeah you have to kind of know the band and who's playing and you got a book ahead of time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, in the South, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
that sounds that sounds good who's that you just kind of you know and a lot of times there's no cover that's another thing like in new york and in probably in london there's like you have to pay a cover to get in yeah. very rarely do you pay a cover in the south to to hear music which is great wow just the names you're mentioning are just so synonymous with such rich musical talent like beale street is just so evocative mm -hmm. of a certain kind of like genius it's it's amazing yeah, I heard a guy, and I wish I could remember his name because I'd love to shout him out, but there was just a random blues player. He had to have been like, maybe he was 19, 20, he was very young. He was incredible on this random little, you know, this random little hole in the wall club on, on Beale Street. And I was like, what? <laughs> he was so incredible. And I think there's still that kind of musical talent in, in places like that where, yeah. you know, people just blow you away, you know? Wow. That's fantastic. That sounds so great. So um, on a kind of broader note, as we've sort of touched on, the, the social history of the region is so fascinating mm -hmm. and so complex. Um, do you have any tips for a visitor who wants to kind of get to grips with the history? Yeah. So there's actually some there's some really great museums and stuff in the South that I think can take you through. Like when you talk about civil rights history, when you're talking about slavery. So like I said, I think they said the National Civil Rights Museum in mm -hmm. Memphis is, is amazing. That's actually located in the Lorraine Motel, which was where Martin Luther King was assassinated. And it's part of the museum. You can kind of go into the space where he was, you know. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, the Legacy Museum in, I think it's uh, it's in Alabama, in Montgomery, Alabama. Mm -hmm. That's a really great museum. And that actually does a great job of kind of talking about the history and how it, it relates to injustice that still happens today. So I think that's a, a really important one because it kind of makes that bridge. Um, so that's a great uh, museum. Let's see, what else would I say? Oh, and I think the third one that I would like, really think everybody should see is the Whitney, the Whitney Plantation. It's outside right. of New Orleans. It's in Louisiana, Southern Louisiana. Okay. And the museum has basically, the, it was an old plantation house, which actually there's a whole controversy around that, but it was an old plantation house and they've flipped it so that the entire museum is now about the enslaved people that live there. And they do a lot of work to like name the people and, and, you know, talk about what their life was like. And, mm -hmm. and so, and I think that's a really great and important kind of work as well. So those are the three, but I'm sure there's like a ton of smaller ones, but mm -hmm. those are the three that I think are really important. I think that's really good advice. I think listeners will, if you're visiting that region, it's almost something that you do really, even though it's obviously very sobering and confronting, it's also very important to learn about. Yeah, I think one of the things I, I wrote an article recently for, I think it was a FAR, about doing the Civil Rights Trail through the South. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think was, you know, important for me was like, it's very sobering history, but at the same time, it's, you know, seeing the work that people, like how things changed based on the work that people put in to change mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? And like, it, in some ways, it's like, almost inspiring to say you know people like where people came from and where we are now and how far we still have to go but like the the knowing that people can change it mm -hmm. is important and I think the community that was created is really important as well like I think part of why the south is cool is kind of that sense of community and that sense of friendliness that comes from <laughs> hard times you know what I mean mm -hmm. like yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's really great to hear that the region's kind of approach to museum culture is about recognising that sense of solidarity and not and it not just being something that's confined to history, but something that's still kind of worth living through and reflecting on now. It feels like those museums are really doing that and they're kind of innovative in their approach to kind of curating that legacy, uh, which is great. Yeah, I think there's I mean, I think there's obviously in the US there's pushback, right? <laughs> so it's it's not all right. fabulous, right? Of there's course, definitely yeah. been pushback. Um and I'm really curious to kind of see, like, I don't know if you've heard, but in the U.S. we've had like a lot of, I think it's the state of Florida, a couple states try to outlaw teaching black history to like mm. students and all of this kind of stuff. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to translate in kind of the larger space uh, in terms of like museums and, and that kind of thing. But I think the museums are trying, you know, and, and I think it's important stuff to talk about. And I think it's important to learn about. 
you know. I guess another way in which the community kind of celebrates their heritage is through food. Obviously, mm. we've already talked about two dishes that you love, but we also wanted to give you a chance if there's anything else that we should talk about food. It, it does seem to be such a big sort of part of the culture. It seems very like it's very comforting kind of food. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because we're kind of talking about that connection. A lot of the food that we think of as Southern food is like specifically African-American food, right? So like barbecue is a big thing mm. in the South. Of course, New Orleans has its own kind of food culture, Creole, Cajun food. Uh, what else is like a big Southern food thing? I mean, I, it's funny because I can I can picture what it is, but like I don't know what you'd call it other than like soul food, Southern food, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of it is it's it's African American food, you know, and yeah, it's it's very much a part of the part of the culture. And what's interesting is I, I, I've actually seen a lot of people recently kind of talking about the history of the food and how things came about. So you can kind of, there's like a, a connection there. There's also a connection around like spaces where, you know, organizing happened, you know, around food. So when you talk about the civil rights, like um, Dookie Chase in New Orleans, mm -hmm. oh, there's another one in Montgomery as well. But there's like all these little restaurants where, you know, you are selling food and also making a space for people to come and and like talk and organize or where you were raising money for different um, movements and stuff like that. So there's definitely this interesting history around food and civil rights. You know, you wouldn't think mm. that it's a connection, but there definitely is. It's definitely, no, you that's know, so interesting. That is mm -hmm. that is amazing. That's so that's so cool. Does food play quite a big part in this idea of Southern hospitality that you mentioned? Is that something that like, will people often like offer for you to come around for food and things like that? Is it quite a social space in that sense? Uh, it is definitely a social space. And I think like if you are there, I think so, for example, when I moved, like one of the times I moved back to New Orleans, you know, my next door neighbor brought me cookies when they saw that I moved in, you know, and Amazing. I've definitely had like where, you know, you're sitting outside and someone on the block is like cooking gumbo and they're like, hey, you hungry? Come on over. You know, oh. I don't know if like as a tourist, you get invited into people's houses like that, although it depends because like I, I, I feel like if you if you're in a bar and you make a friend and they're like, you know, the potentiality for them to be like, oh, you should come to my house is, <laughs> yeah. is there, you know? But yeah, like food is definitely like sharing food is definitely like a cultural thing in the South. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because it's something that I've really tried to carry into living in New York. Yeah. I keep trying to do like Sunday dinners and invite people over because <laughs> it's an excuse to cook, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Len, I could talk to you about this food stuff all day, but just to wrap up this section, are there any other highlights that we haven't mentioned that listeners simply shouldn't miss if they visit the region? Yeah. So, OK, like I said, definitely the beaches in Alabama. That is mm. super important. I think if you're a music person doing a road trip along the Blues Trail, so from Jackson, Mississippi to Memphis is really cool and important to do. I think everybody talks a lot about Charleston. Charleston is beautiful. It's worth a visit. But I feel like North Carolina gets left out because Charleston's in South Carolina. Of North course. Carolina is also really cool, particularly the, the outer banks, like the islands off the coast of North Carolina. Yeah. And then, oh, all up and down kind of the coast of like South Carolina and Georgia is kind of the Gullah Geechee. I don't know if you've ever heard of this community. It's a, how do I explain it? There's, it's a, it's a particular community or culture where it was like African Americans that were sort of isolated out on these out islands mm -hmm. during slavery. And they've have like a unique culture and language and uh, community. Wow. And they're just starting to try to like do more tourism to actually preserve the, the culture out there. So that's kind of a cool thing that, uh, that I think more, I wish more people would, you know, go and support them, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Gullah. That's a really good tip. Thank you. Yeah, I could do this all day. I've got so many. <laughs> <laughs> we can listen to it all day. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of forgot we were recording a podcast there. We need to get, need to get back on track. <laughs> Epic adventures, evocative landscapes, iconic cities, and irresistible food. The USA offers enough bucket list experiences to fill a lifetime. Whatever your dream trip involves, your DKI Witness USA is the perfect companion. Okay, Lynn, so you've inspired us all to go to the Deep South. 
So if listeners are now planning their visit, when's the best time for them to go? <laughs> well, so I would say the summer <laughs> because there's actually less tourists in the summer. It's sort of the off season, but it's because it's very hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it depends yeah. on whether or not you can handle the heat. That's my favorite time to go just because it's like you get a more authentic, like, you know, there's not a lot of tourists. You're like the only person or one of a few people and you get like, it's just a really different experience. If, however, you can't handle the heat, I would say spring, because you want to avoid hurricane season probably, <laughs> which is of course. like fall. Yeah, okay. so spring, yeah, summer or spring, I would say. And in summer, are we talk I guess we're talking about like a humid heat, right? Yeah, yeah. Quite oppressive kind of heat. Yeah, I've, I've said to people that like my first time in New Orleans, it felt like someone threw a hot, wet blanket over my head. Oh, wow. <laughs> it can be pretty wow. bad in the summer. <laughs> but like, I don't know, it also rains like every day. Uh, the further south you go in particular, like if you're down on the, yeah, New Orleans or um, Biloxi, Mississippi, down like by the Gulf, you get this sort of subtropical where it, like it'll rain every day. Mm. And it's like that warm rain where you're like, oh, it's refreshing. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, quite nice actually. <laughs> yeah. I like the summer, but I also like the heat. So I think a lot of most people probably would not say summertime. <laughs> How do the locals cope with the heat? Do they have siesta or anything like that? No, I think they're just used to it. I think just you just, cope. you know, yeah, you just get used to it and you're like, oh, huh? it's hot out, you know. Yeah, because I wouldn't even say people really avoid being out necessarily even. Like, there's no siesta. They're, they're out. But, like, I do think that might be why things are a little bit slower in the South, you know? Because <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. like, it's hot and you're like, I'm not rushing, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's kind of how people cope is to just kind of slow down and, and respect the weather a little bit more, you know? I like that. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. And talking about this year in particular, Lynn, are there any events that our listeners should put in their calendar for 2024? Jazz Fest is coming up, which is in New nice. Orleans. It's like a huge uh, music festival. And it's actually a music and culture festival. So they have great food if you're a food person. Jazz Fest oh. is definitely, I think it's in April. Would recommend okay. that. There's a lot of little blues festivals in Mississippi that are cool that I would I would definitely recommend. I feel like Atlanta, Georgia has some cool. I realize I haven't talked a lot about Georgia, but um, but I feel like Atlanta has some cool festivals as well. And I'm trying to think of yeah, I can't think of the name, but yeah. So th there's yes. some cool festivals, a lot of music festivals, a lot of food festivals. Definitely the food festivals are, are worth, worthwhile um, in sure. the South. Barbecue and yeah. It almost sounds like there's always something going on. So there's never really a bad time in the calendar. Yeah, basically. And it's interesting because I do think that they do, a lot of places will do festivals on, in the off seasons so that like to get more right. visitors. And so, yeah, there's always something going on, especially because the, the Deep South is such a big span of states. So you can kind of find somewhere that's doing something fun. But definitely Jazz Fest. This year, I really want to go to Jazz Fest. One of my favorite musicians is playing Jazz Fest. So. <laughs> nice. I hope you get to go. Who's your favorite musician? Uh, well, it's funny because it's not he's not a Southerner. He's actually from Ireland. Hosier. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Right, okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hosier is playing, uh, is playing Jazz Fest this year. And I was like, oh, I got to go. <laughs> Do they tend to have like a lot of big international acts as well, as well as sort of local talent? Yeah, yeah. And that's what's kind of cool about Jazz Fest is that you get like big headliners. Like I think, was is it this year? I know it like the 50th anniversary Rolling Stones, the Rolling Stones were supposed to play and then it was like COVID wow. or something. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, you get these big headliner acts, but then you also get kind of really local bands. And so it's like such a great, festival because you get kind of a big span of different kinds of music and um because it's not all just jazz you know like it's called yeah. the jazz festival but you have like blues you've got gospel you've got hip-hop you've got you know so and does it take place in venues across the city or is it like a specific site with with kind of like purpose-built stages yeah there's a there's a, a festival like space uh where the right. main thing the main actual jazz fest happens but i will say that during jazz fest you also get like more music in general because people are in town for music of course. so it's also a great time to just go see local bands so i even if you 
can't afford the ticket to go to Jazz Fest, going during Jazz Fest is great if you're a music fan because there's like everywhere has music that whole like every you know, it's, it's over two weekends. So basically that whole week, there's like a bunch of bands hanging out. So, yeah. I feel like I'm overhauling my travel plans for this year now. But I just want to, I'm <laughs> scrapping know, everything. I'm coming to New Orleans. <laughs> that sounds so good. Okay, I've got one last question for you, Lynn, and then we're going to let you go. Okay. So how can travellers make a positive impact when they visit the region? Yeah, so I think that one of the things that I definitely would recommend is doing your best to kind of support local businesses. Yep. So, you know, we've talked a lot about food. There's some really great little hole-in-the-wall spots that I think could use more love. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. that's a great way to do it. I think learning a bit about the history, you know, supporting museums and, and just generally learning a bit about the history is also a great way. But like, yeah, I think that like in general, like making sure, doing your best to make sure that the money that you're spending when you go is going to the community that lives there is like the best way. Because there's, I mean, the cool thing about the South is there are a lot of little small businesses i think mm -hmm. that like in new york for example it's really hard to like for little tiny businesses to like to survive because it's just so expensive whereas yeah. in the south you still have like like the hot tamales a lot of the mississippi hot mm -hmm. tamales are just like little stands on the side of the road you know what i mean but i think if you support those businesses that you know it can really be it can make a big difference so yeah that's a great answer. Thank you. Are there any hole in the wall spots that you'd like to shout out? Oh, man. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Put me on the spot. There is a spot in Mississippi and... Oh, I can't remember the name though. Is the problem? <laughs> it's okay. I completely put you on the yes. spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's there's a it's a it's a place in Indianola, Mississippi, which is like the middle of nowhere, but it's a on the Blues Trail because it's where the BB King Museum is. Nice. And it's a woman's name, and it's a little hole in the wall spot, and it's like in an old gas station. But the food is incredible. It's like definitely somebody's grandma in the back room cooking. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's so good. And I cannot remember the name, though. But yeah, that place was amazing. I like the fact that we're going to have to work quite hard to try and find <laughs> it. Like find we've earned it. our right to be there. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. If, you, if you Google, I think if you Google like Indianola, Mississippi restaurant in a gas station, <laughs> okay. like, it'll come up. <laughs> I bet a lot of these places, it's also like word of mouth, isn't it? I bet they're hard to find online. Yeah, and that's how I found that place, actually. I was at the B.B. King Museum, and there's a place that's, like, right across the street that's kind of known, and everybody kind of goes there. But the lady at the front desk was like, no, no, you got to go to this place. <laughs> like, go yeah. down this road. You'll see a gas station. It's not a gas station. And that's how oh, I found amazing. that place. Yeah, <laughs> Those are the best spots where someone tells you to go there, and they're like, okay, so it's going to look really weird from the outside. You're going to have to, like, yeah. climb through this weird little hole. But then it's, like, <laughs> totally worth going. Yeah. <laughs> totally and i think that's so one of the cool things about the south is that like people are so friendly that you can get that like you can just stop someone and be like all right where do i go and get yeah. this and everyone will have yeah. an opinion you know nice well that concludes the episode this has been amazing thank you so much lynn me and alex are gonna go and book our flights <laughs> yeah yeah i'm already on the website now <laughs> <laughs> let me know I, I i love putting itineraries together so you you just you know hit me up and i'll send you. we most definitely will yeah yeah i'll tell you where to go <laughs> amazing thank you so much then i feel like we gave you such a hard remit it's such a huge geographical mm. region to cover and you've done an, an amazing job of kind of touching so many bases so that's brilliant yeah thanks i I feel like I, I'm going to get off the call and be like, oh, I forgot this place. But yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks so much to Lynn. If you wanted to follow any more of her work, you can find more at literarylynn.com or you can follow her Instagram at lrdbrown79. Yes, thank you so much, Lynn. She was amazing. And guess what? She managed to remember the restaurant that she teased us with at the end of the episode. So she just sent through the name. It's Betty's Place. Everybody go to Betty's Place. <laughs> I cannot wait to visit Betty's Place. It sounds great. And Bella, we've got some really, really exciting other destinations coming I up this know. season. Um, we're going to be going to Quebec. We're going to be going to, go to Stockholm and Hong Kong, to name just a few. But that is it for today's episode. So we will see you all next time. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening. See you next time.
Where to Go is a podcast from DKR Witness. It was produced by Julia Baker and presented by Alex Pathé and Bella Tolbert. For more information about DKI Witness, follow us on social media at DKI Witness or visit dk.com slash eyewitness. Please like and follow the show. And if you have time, leave a review. Your support means so much. Thank you.